Hello everybody, it's uh, Hippidippin here and today uh, I'm going to be starting a new series as you can guys probably tell by the title it's going to be called the best of their types and all this is is a um, uh, my opinion um, based on competitive use uh, outlining the best Pokemon of their types, the top 10 Pokemon of their types and um, really I mean this is just a subjective list this is my opinion but I feel like it is valid just because these Pokemon work very very well uh, with their types and um, very viable Pokemon and this is all based off competitive usage this is nothing to do with aesthetics this is nothing to do with um, in-game usage this is purely based on uh, you know competitive Pokemon playing so this is that's how I'm basing this uh, series off and uh, yeah so let's go ahead and uh, get started best of the types the, I'm gonna be starting off with grass and the reason I'm doing so is just because a lot of teams tend to have a grass type Pokemon on them at least as far as I've noticed and um, grass is a very good type so let's go ahead and look at the basics um, mostly used defensively. Grass is a very good type to absorb common um, common offensive Pokemon moves, uh, especially those like Earthquake and um, any stone type moves, water type moves. Grass can usually go ahead and take care of that. And they can go ahead and set up statuses and hazards too, primarily Leech Seed, which in my opinion is one of the best um, status conditions you can put on a Pokemon. Just for the fact that they can, uh, you know, you're getting health back from them. It's another form of recovery and you're hurting them at the same time. Also, it's the um, most amount of HP you can get back per turn as a recovery move. It's not a singular thing, it's an overtime, and, it, and that gives you the most HP out of all the recovery moves. So that has that going for it too. They can usually heal themselves and remain healthy in battle through status moves like uh, Synthesis or Leech Seed, like I said, and um, they are usually stick around for a while. Uh, grass types are usually very bulky and have means of healing themselves. They are not very fast, um, and they also tend to have many weaknesses. Flying, poison, fire, and ice, and bug, those are all their weaknesses. And unfortunately, uh, due to the increased presence of fairies, the poison type is seeing some more uh, reemergence as well. Um, flying type is an issue, fire type, all these are issues that uh, grass type Pokemon usually have to deal with. Um, but as you'll see, some Pokemon on this list will deal with them very, very well. So, it's just a matter of what Pokemon can do what. So, let's go ahead and start off with number 10, Superior. And this may seem like an odd choice for anybody who's been playing, uh, but I explain my reasons why. Uh, very soon, well, hang on. Very soon, there will be an event for Superior, and that will give out its hidden ability which is Contrary. And while that may not seem like a big deal, Contrary actually uh, switches the uh, what the status conditions of moves do. So, for example, Leaf Storm, which is a base 130 power move, uh, also reduces the special attack by two. But if Superior were to use it and have the ability Contrary, uh, uh, Leaf Storm would go ahead and boost its special attack by two stages, which is absolutely crazy for a move that powerful. Also, it's Stab, so that's something to look forward to. Um, whoops, I'm sorry, not that slide. Uh, Superior has great base 75, 95, 95 defenses. While they're not incredible, um, it does allow for you to be, um, somewhat bulky as a base 75 HP stat certainly is respectable. Um, great defensive move pool, uh, access to its hidden ability in the near future, and its base 113 speed is something to look forward to in using. Um, it, it, a good, fast, bulky grass type is ideal. Fast, bulky Pokemon in general are great. They um, not only can they outspeed other Pokemon, but that gives them another edge against other defensive Pokemon as well. They can shut down others too. Um, however, Superior does have some drawbacks. Its saving grace, its ability, is very predictable in the near future. Not now, but in the within um, 
a few days, I believe. Uh, it's soon to be extremely common too. So that is not I ideal for it. Um, uh, soon a lot of people will be running superior sets and that's why it's all the way down on here because it's very, very common. Uh, or it will be very common, excuse me, and it's also very predictable. While some of the other Pokemon on the set are predictable, they can usually do their job very well. So, right now, Superior's at the bottom, but we'll have to see how the metagame adapts in the future to go ahead and judge it based on that. So, for now, it's at number 10, uh, and all these Pokemon have sets attached to them. 252 in HP, 252 in Special Defense, foreign defense and a negative uh, nature and attack. Um, now, contrary is gonna be his hidden ability in the future. Uh, you wanna give him leftovers. I find that to be good, just so you can get extra recovery without having to rely on getting a leech seed up. So, that's kinda nice. Um, Leaf Storm, obvious with the contrary ability. Uh, synchronizes very well with that. Leech seed, just to get as much HP back as possible. Taunt to shut down other walls. Now that's very important. Coupled with that 113 speed I talked about. Um, that's gonna be very nice. Glare to paralyze other Pokemon. Uh, you know, I mean, paralysis is very helpful in cutting other Pokemon's speed, as well as making them uh, have a chance to not attack that turn and get fully paralyzed. So that's kind of nice. And uh, really, yeah, Superior is going to be a great Pokemon in the future. I have a feeling it's going to be very, very common, so that's why it's this low on this list. But let's move on to number 9, Chestnut. A very common Pokemon in the UU uh, metagame, especially as of late, I've noticed. It's, uh, it's very common. Uh, and you know what? It should be. It's a very good Pokemon. Its, it's defenses are very, very nice, very good, something to look forward to. Uh, especially with a nice bulky Pokemon such as itself. So, uh, it has an awesome base 1, uh, excuse me, awesome base 88, 122, 75 defenses. So that's very, very cool for a good defensive grass type Pokemon. This Pokemon will eat up Earthquakes, it's crazy. Uh, its ability to be diverse is nice. While it's generally used as a defensive Pokemon, you can definitely throw some other Pokemon off their guard by being you know, offensive. Uh, it has access to great stab, physical move pool, uh, wood hammer, hammer arm, uh, superpower, I believe. And uh, yeah, I mean, those moves alone hit a bunch of hard Pokemon. You know, it's going to be doing some serious damage if you wanted to roll with those, especially with some attack investment. It's also a hazard setter, able to set up spikes fairly reliably. Um, Unfortunately, it does have a large number of weaknesses, it is slow, and it is unviable in higher tiers. The reason it is so uh, used right now is just because the it's used primarily in UU. And the reason it's used is just because people are looking for something to go ahead and take those earthquakes, number one, uh, take all those moves that it resists, and to go ahead and set up more hazards. That's usually what you would see. Uh, not always, but that's a fairly common way to run Chestnut, and that's how a lot of people do do it. Now, um, the reason it's unviable in higher tiers is just because it's walled by so many other Pokemon, namely Heatran, uh, namely, you know, any Cresselia, for example. It's just, it's just shut down by so many higher things. It is in UU right now, and uh, you know what, I don't see it changing anytime soon. So, Chestnut, very good Pokemon. Uh, let's go ahead and look at its stats, or its set, excuse me, 252 in HP, 252 plus in defense, and by the way guys, this is just my opinion for what would be a really good set for each of these Pokemon. For Chestnut, uh, you're going to want 252 in HP, 252 plus in defense, foreign attack, minus in special attack, negative nature in special attack, excuse me. Uh, you're going to want bulletproof, that'll block some interesting moves, allow you to switch in opportunities, which is kind of cool. Uh, and you can run leftovers or rocky helmet. Personally, I prefer leftovers just because you're relying on leech seed then for recovery and you have no reliable way of getting any HP back without leech seed. So. 
Uh, leftovers just allows you to get something back while you're setting up Leech Seed or setting up Spikes or whatever. So personally, I prefer Leftovers, but Rocky Helmet is also another good alternative that will allow you to hurt some other Pokemon as they're hurting you. And you can go ahead and set up whatever. Uh, but yeah, really, uh, this is a good set. Um, I've actually run Chestnut before. Excuse me guys, I'm very sorry about that, my recorder stopped. But like I said, I have run Chestnut in the past and I found a set very similar to this to be very good. And looking back in hindsight, I feel like this one would be more uh, viable, especially in uh, UU. So let's go ahead and move on. Um, our next Pokemon is gonna be Amoongus. A uh, very common Pokemon, especially in lower tiers. It is, uh, and it, you know what, it deserves all that usage just because of how viable it really is. And this is a Pokemon you'll see normally in, uh, uh, mostly in UU and below. Excuse me. Um, but yes, it is a very good Pokemon, and it has access to very good um, moves and abilities. So let's go ahead and look at that. Base 114, 70, and 80 defenses, which is awesome. A good high HP stat will allow you to go ahead and uh, survive some hits, especially with two remarkable uh, 70 and 80 defenses, which will allow you to go ahead and uh, be either uh, physically or especially defensive. You have access to Regenerator. You can uh, stop lower tier fairies, namely Florges, which is a major problem in UU. Uh, able to heal itself throughout switching and keep it viable throughout the match, so that's pretty cool. Uh, like I said, can be either physically or especially defensive. The only problem is it is slow. And it is easy to switch into after Spore, because after Spore you cannot do too, too much to a uh, other Pokemon, so that's the problem. But it does have that awesome access to Spore, but unfortunately due to the um, nature of Sleep Claws, you cannot Spore multiple times while one Pokemon on their team is asleep, so that kind of shuts down that option. But Spore is a good option. Spore is a very good move to go ahead and um, cut down on you know, force the opponent to switch, and you can go ahead and set up something from there. Now, uh, its set would be 252 in HP, 152 plus in special defense, 104 in defense, minus in attack, and uh, regenerator its hidden ability is most uh, useful, I feel. Uh, you're gonna wanna run Black Sludge, you're gonna wanna run Spore, Giga Drain, Toxic, and Venishock. Now, I have a couple things to explain in this set. Namely, if your team requires a more defensive or especially defensive Pokemon and you want to use Amoongus, go ahead and throw all those extra EVs in whatever stat you want. Don't split it up like I have. However, if you want just a good pivot, then 152 plus in special defense and 104 defense is not a bad idea. Now, this will allow you to go ahead and take hits, granted, not as well as if you were max invested. But still, this is a very good very good option to go ahead and look into. Um, now, as for the Venishock, I know absolutely nobody runs it, but if you can land a Toxic and get another Pokemon Toxic, Venishock would be doing insane amounts of damage, bringing it to a base 130 power move uh, because Venishock increases in power, doubles in power actually, if the uh, opposing Pokemon is poisoned. So if you go ahead and look into that, that will be doing much more damage than say Sludge Bomb. Uh, only, a few, uh, only 30 base less damage than Sludge Bomb if you use Sludge Bomb twice. So that's a lot of damage. Now, uh, Sporing Giga Drain just to help you get back HP. But yeah, this is mainly a pivot. So you can use this to pivot into something and uh, you know keep your momentum up, which is nice. So that's Amoongus. Uh, Let's keep going. My number seven is Shaman, and uh, you know what? Who doesn't like Shaman? It's a very good Pokemon. Very uh, good stats, actually. 100 in each, uh, you know, stat. And uh, it has access to another form, which is more uh, offensive. But let's go ahead and look at it. Uh, it has access to land and sky forms. Land form has base 100 across all stats. Sky form is more especially offensive with a 120 special attack and 120 base speed. Um, they are very diverse sets and play styles. It's unpredictable, hard to switch into, and uh, unfortunately for Shaman, it has a very limited move pool. Now, the sky form is technically in Ubers, and the land form is in UU. So, 
if you go ahead and look at it that way, you get two Pokemon pretty much from the same one. So that's a little bit of cheating, but you know what? It's a very good Pokemon, very viable, um, especially its land form in the lower tiers. Uh, Sky form, a little bit shaky in Ubers, but uh, you can go ahead and make it work very, very easily. Now let's go ahead and uh, look at its set. 252 in HP and 252 plus in special attack, four in speed, minus in attack. Now, a high base 100 HP stat will allow you to live a lot of hits, and thanks to its defensive typing, it's able to take earthquakes and rock slides and whatever. You can go ahead and switch it into, threaten that Pokemon out, and then go ahead and predict from there. Now, uh, yeah, I mean, that's an awesome, go ahead and run that set, man, it'll work for you. Now, Natural Cure is going to allow you to keep switching in and out and avoid, you know, being worn down by status conditions, and it'll generally keep you healthy, which is nice. And the item you can run is either Life Orb or Leftover, depending on how defensive you want to be and how offensive you want to be. Uh, personally, if I were you, I'd run Life Orb, and that would allow you to go ahead and hit much harder with much more power. <laughs> I mean, this thing is ridiculous. Uh, sea Flare, Air Slash, Dazzling Gleam, and Psychic are all moves it can use, and those are very good moves to go ahead and roll with. Uh, sea Flare and Air Slash providing good stabs. And this is for the land, land form, let me uh, make that clear. I don't have a set for the Sky form, but uh, yeah, this is, would be a uh, very viable set for the land form. And Dazzling Gleam and Psychic taking care of fairies and, uh, and not fairies, excuse me, fighting types and poison, all that stuff. If you can predict a switch, Psychic would be doing a lot of damage to whatever poison type wanted to switch in. All right, uh, let's keep going. Our number six is going to be Winds of Scott, and uh, yeah, very an interesting Pokemon. Uh, part Grass Fairy, excellent typing by the way, and access to Prankster. So. Like I just said, access to Prankster, base 60, 85, and 75 defenses, many resistances to common types, namely Fighting, and Earthquake, and Stone Age, and all that stuff I already mentioned. Very cool. Dragons, also. <laughs> Immune to dragons, That's that's gotta be nice, right? Uh, it is annoying to deal with. I have had so many annoying moments with Whimsicott, but that's just how good it is. I mean... A Pokemon this viable is got to be annoying at some point, but it does have a limited move pool. If you look, it very it has very few moves to work with. It is four times weak to poison, which is a very uh, it, it it's it's um it's hard to work with. I feel like if your opponent does have a poison type, and unfortunately it is walled by many Pokemon, uh, namely grass types. Uh, grass it does have an issue dealing with grass types. But hopefully you wouldn't be in a situation where Whimsicott would have to be up against any of the Pokemon it would be able to, uh, that would wall it. And uh, hopefully you'd be able to get them out of there. So let's go ahead and look at its set. 252 in HP, 252 plus in defense, four in special attack, minus in nature and attack. So he's gonna, you're gonna wanna run Prankster, which is uh, the standard set. Leftovers, would, which would allow you to uh, go ahead and heal yourself. You're gonna want to run Leech Seed, more recovery, uh, Cotton Guard, excuse me, I choked. Uh, <laughs> Cotton Guard, which would allow you to live more hits, Taunt to shut down other Pokemon, uh, especially set up uh, offensive Pokemon and other walls, or other defensive Pokemon, and uh, Moon Blast, just to go ahead and have something to hit the opponent with in case you got taunted yourself. So that's something to watch out for. But yeah, this set would pretty much be the standard Scott set and what has made it so viable in the tiers that it's in. Now, with Cotton Guard, you're gonna be taking, you're gonna allow yourself to take many, many physical hits. And that's something to look forward to, especially if using Scott. Personally, if your team needs a good, solid, uh, you know, defensive Pokemon and doesn't have one, you might want to consider Whimsicott. The good combination between Grass and uh, Fairy will allow you to go ahead and resist many types, and it is uh, very worthwhile, if I might add. Especially after you get a Cotton Guard up, 2.5 times defense is something very, very nice and something very few Pokemon have access to, so keep that in mind. Our next Pokemon is going to be Trevenant. And one of my personal favorites, grass types, 
and uh, you'll see why in a second. It's just so, so ridiculously good. And uh, personally, I think it's better than Whims has got. Very solid 85, 76, slash 82 defenses, especially when taking burn into account. Now, how many of these grass type Pokemon can burn their opponents? Not many, in fact, not at all. However, Trevenant can, which puts my apologies for that guys, my recorder stop, but as I was saying, this Pokemon Trevenant can burn the opponent, which would allow it to take a, a, a lot of hits, you know, physically. Uh, it would be able to slash their attack and make its 76 defense look a whole lot better. Now, it also has a 110 base attack stat. Very nice, something to look into. Beneficial ghost typing, uh, immune to uh, fighting, which is nice. Uh, harvest allows for berry abuse, can last a very, very, very long time in battle, and is slow, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but I remember a game I did have when I had a Trevenant, and I believe the amount of turns was easily over 130. Uh, just because Trevenant would not die, he, um, I kept using Rest and then Lumberry to keep myself healthy, and the opponent still had like three Pokemon left, and he just couldn't kill me, and uh, I ended up uh, dying because of struggle. I ran out of PP to use, so that is a very sad, very sad tale, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, Trevenant is a very good Pokemon. In my opinion, I have run him a lot in my teams. And uh, as if you guys have watched my videos, you'll know that I do enjoy using Trevenant against my opponent. So, very good Pokemon. I can attest to his greatness. Let's go ahead and uh, look at his stats. Or his moveset, excuse me. 200, you're going to want to run 252 in HP, 252 plus in defense, 4 in attack, and minus and special attack, negative nature. Now, uh, you're gonna wanna run Harvest. This is what makes this Pokemon so, so good. And you can either run Lumberry, Citrus Berry, or Chesto Berry. Now, they each serve different purposes. Now, I would definitely prefer either Lumberry or Chesto Berry. And I'll tell you why. Uh, Lumberry is the one I would normally run. It's because it would allow you, Trevenant, to switch into status conditions, heal yourself, and you get, there's a 50% chance to harvest on the next turn, so you're not really risking too much by uh, staying in with a statusing Pokemon. So I would go ahead and go with Lumberry. However, if you wanted to run Chesto Berry for uh, using Rest, that would be awesome. I mean, very viable option, but for me personally, I'd prefer to go ahead and uh, run Lumberry. Citrus Berry is also an option to keep healing yourself over and over and over again. However, the only downside to that is um, you would be at risk for Toxic, and Toxic would, of course, eventually kill you. However, it does free up a move slot in Rest, so you can go ahead and run, say, uh, another move, which is nice, like Earthquake or something. But Personally, this is the set I would run. Shadow Claw, Horn Leech, Will-O-Wisp, and Rest. And that works very well with Lumberry and Chestoberry. So, something to keep in mind when you're running Trevenant. And I, I personally, this is one of my favorite Pokemon in this whole list. So, if I can sell you any Pokemon, it would be Trevenant. Uh, so, we're going to move on to our next Pokemon, which is Breloom. A Pokemon in the OU tier, he's very, very good, and you guys will notice I have waited until now to start introducing the OU Pokemon, just because they're so good, they're very viable. And um, Breloom is an example of that. Base 130 attack, this is uh, the first offensive Pokemon on this list, and uh, yeah, he's one of two on this list, and uh, he is very, very good. Technician allows for more diversity. He also has access to Poison Heal, but I definitely would not recommend that right now in the OU tier, just because of how many uh, Pokemon can take advantage of that. He has access to Spore, which is nice. Allows you to put something to sleep, and then go ahead and bop another Pokemon as it switches in. Or if it stays in, you get off damage, which is very, very cool. Good stamp to take advantage of bulky water types which is something uh, Grass-type Pokemon have uh, an advantage over, especially those very, very bulky Grass-types like Quagsire, or uh, Bulky Swampert, or, um, you know, Milotic, stuff like that. This Pokemon just takes advantage of all that, provided 
you don't get burned from Scald, but you know what? That's a whole scenario I'm not getting into. Uh, base 70 speed requires a focus sash and leaves something to be desired. Uh, base 70 speed is nothing to go ahead and write home about. It does require a focus sash. Well, I wouldn't say require, but it's very, very strongly urged to use a focus sash. However, if you are risky, uh, you can go ahead and run a life orb. I have seen life orb Breloom put in some work, especially on sticky web teams. But if you want to go ahead and run a uh, life orb, I'd go ahead and say, have fun, man. Just, you know, know the risks, okay? Uh, with a focus sash, you're at least, you know, confirmed that you're going to get a spore off if you need it to. However, it does have many weaknesses to common types. This is what I was referring to earlier about the uh, uh, poison heal ability. You can go run it, go ahead and run a toxic orb with it, which is what I did for a long time. But however, right now in the OU metagame, Talon Flame being as you know prevalent as it is can just kill you with a Brave Bird instantly. It's no, it's no question. And um, really, the, it, it it is an issue with. Uh, the flying type being so prevalent in OU and all tiers really so you're gonna have to watch out for that four times weakness and it is very uh, excuse, excuse me fairly predictable uh, most Breloom run about the same set and this would be that set let's go ahead and look at it 252 in attack 252 plus in speed four in defense minus in special attack technician hidden ability uh, you're gonna want to run focus sash or life orb you're going to want to run Bullet Seed, Spore, Mock Punch, and Rock Tomb. You know, fairly standard set, and uh, yeah, this would be what you would expect if you were to see a Braylon. Now, Bullet Seed, thanks to Technician, is very, very powerful, and the ability to hit multiple times breaks Focus Sashes and allows you to get off extreme damage, which is very, very cool. Uh, Life Orb allows you to hit harder, as I said. Uh, Spore allows you to put something to sleep. Mock Punch, thanks to Technician, is going to be as powerful as Scizor's Bullet Punch, which is very cool. Uh, Rock Tomb, which will allow you to hit those flying types on the switch, and if you can predict it correctly, and lower their speed. So this is where that 252 plus in speed comes in handy. You want to be as fast as possible, that way if you were to get a speed drop, you can hit them again, which is very, very cool. And. Um, that's why he's very viable on uh, sticky web teams in particular. Our next Pokemon, Mega Sceptile. And let me tell you something, Mega Sceptile is very, very underrated for what it is. Uh, in which it is a grass dragon type Pokemon that hits very, very hard. <laughs> I mean, I've had such success with this Pokemon, I could not not put it on this list. And um, the only reason I put it on as a number three above Breloom is um, because it, it's just able to sweep so easily, wherein as Breloom would be stopped by anything faster than it with a flying type move. That's the problem. So I'd go ahead and uh, put Mega Sceptile above him. I mean, really, he's so good. So let's go ahead and take a gander at those stats or about it rather, severe base 145 in special attack as well as base 145 speed. And uh, it's severe for your opponents um, in regards to how much damage you can get off. Now 145 in special attack is nearly unheard of in uh, other Pokemon, so you're going to be able to fire off, you know, uh, Giga Drains and Dragon Pulses as hard as you possibly can. Uh, which is very, very cool. Uh, base 145 speed allows you to outspeed almost everything in the game uh, if you're running max speed. Um, but really, 145 speed outspeeds most, uh, you know, birds, uh, namely, like, Talon Flame. If it's not running Gale Wings, which I don't know why it wouldn't be, but, I mean, base 145 speed is... It, I mean, it's really one of the best... Things you can have in the Pokemon metagame right now. Uh, remarkable 110 attack allows you to run Earthquake, and uh, which is nice. Uh, that, that base 110 attack will allow you to go ahead and surprise some opponents, expecting you to be especially offensive. So you can go ahead and run a physical set, but that base 145 special attack is looking mighty fine. Um, it has great special and physical move pool. This is this Pokemon has one of the best move move pools I've ever seen in a game. I mean, it's it's really really great. 
it is near impossible to switch into. And um, that's what makes it so great. Because if you switch into it, you're going to be taking damage. And if you take enough, he's going to be allow he's going to allow for himself to beat you, essentially one v one. So that's pretty neat. Uh, he's able to sweep after weakening by other team members. So if your team can go ahead and weaken, uh, you know, the opponent, you can go ahead and sweep them easily. I have sweeped many, many teams with Mega Sceptile. It's crazy. And it's able to absorb Thunder Wave, so you're not going to have to worry about being a par fully paralyzed or having your speed drop. So that's kind of nice. And it's also... Sorry about that. As I was saying, it's also going to boost your special attack in the process just because... Um, you know, it's a lightning rod, which is a good ability. Granted, it's, you know, electric is four times resistant to um, the combination of grass and dragon, but this is what I feel like it was intended for. Was I, I think it was intended for Thunder Wave. Uh, so look forward to that if you can predict a Thunder Wave and switch into it. That's kind of cool. It is four times weak to ice, however, which is an issue. Ice Shard would be able to demolish Mega Sceptile if it was low enough. Hell, even if it wasn't low enough. Um, but really, four times weak to ice is an issue and is shared among many, many dragons. So you will have to look out for that when you're using him. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be Mega Sceptile. Let's go ahead and look at its set. 252 plus in special attack, 252 in speed, 4 in attack, minus in defense, lightning rod, which is a good ability, uh, in my opinion, for at least. Uh, you're going to run Receptalite, obviously. Leaf Storm, which is a super powerful move, and we talked about it earlier with Superior, and it is base 130 damage, which is awesome. Uh, Giga Drain, just to bring yourself back up. Dragon Pulse, good stab move. Hits other dragons hard. Uh, Rock Slide and Earthquake, uh, since you got that four EVs and attack. And um, normally I would run the minus nature in a uh, either attack or special attack, depending on what the Pokemon was. But since this Pokemon can be slightly mixed, I decided to put the minus in defense, allowing you to run Rock Slide and Earthquake without having the stat compromise. So that's kind of neat. Uh, personally, I'd run lock, Rock Slide. I cannot talk. I'm very sorry. Uh, personally, I would run Rock Slide just because you're going to be hit, uh, hitting birds that are switching in and allows you to hit other Pokemon fairly hard uh, when they go ahead and uh, come in against you if you can't hit them super effectively. However, uh, Leaf Storm and Giga Drain would be doing more, and Dragon Pulse would be doing more than a unresisted Rock Slide. So go ahead and keep that in mind. Our next Pokemon is Mega Venusaur, and he is from the game X and Y, and he has remained as popular since then. Right now, everybody's still all crazy about the new Megas, that they're neglecting the old ones. So, if you can go ahead and use Mega Venusaur, I would go ahead and recommend it. I mean, he's a great Pokemon. Uh, personally, I feel like he's one of the best of the Megas from X and Y, and really, I feel like he is underappreciated in the amount of work that he can put in on teams. So really he's a good Pokemon. So let's go ahead and look at his, uh, look at him. Phenomenal base 80, 123, 120 defenses, which is very respectable. I mean, you just don't see that too often. Base 122 special attack allows you to go ahead and fire off attacks. Crazy, right? <laughs> but I mean, it, it, it is something to respect. Uh, thick Fat eliminates two common weaknesses, namely Fire and Ice, and um, it makes you neutral to them, so that's very cool. Two more types that are neutral. And uh, stops fairies in their tracks. Much like Amoongus, this Pokemon will stop the fairies in the higher tier, namely OU and higher, uh, particularly Sylveon, which is an issue, uh, especially in OU. Uh, Walls a very good portion of the metagame. Like I said, Me Mega Venusaur stops Pokemon in their tracks. I mean, <laughs> it's very, very good. And all the times I've run Mega Venusaur, I have been pleased just because he is so well used. Um, and can be, uh, you know, very devastating to the opponent based on that 122 special attack. However, it does have some negatives, unfortunately. It can be walled itself. It can be gradually worn down, 
and if taunted, all is you all is lost for sustainability. Uh, what that basically means if your opponent goes for taunt, you're pretty much reduced to going for uh, Giga Drains and Sludge Bombs, and uh, that is not ideal. Now, really, if you can avoid that, you're fine. But Mega Venusaur can be whittled down eventually, so you will have to watch out for that. A good set for Mega Venusaur is this. 252 in HP, 252 plus in special defense, 4 in defense, minus in attack. You're going to want to run Thick Fat, Venusaurite, Giga Drain, Leech Seed, Sludge Bomb, and Synthesis. Now, Leech Seed and Synthesis are just there, as well as Giga Drain to get your HP back. And uh, since it has no uh, form of recovery in terms of leftovers, you're going to be able to use these moves to go ahead and get yourself back up and keep yourself up there while you're in. Sludge Bomb says to hit fairies and uh, is, is generally a good stab move. Uh, but yeah, this is a very solid set. There's not much to explain, but really this, this Pokemon is very easy to use, number one. Number two, not that many people are using him right now, so if you can go ahead and use him and take advantage of the mega meta game right now, you can go ahead and uh, be pretty well off, I feel like. And this is not a waste in a mega slot, you know what I mean? It, it, it's very, very good, and not a lot of people are capitalizing on the opportunity to use him. So if, if you were a new player right now, I'd recommend Mega Venusaur. At least try him out in OU, if you are gonna play OU. Now, our last Pokemon, it's gonna be Fairhorn. And as much as I personally dislike Fairhorn, I have to admit how good of a Pokemon he is. Nintendo set him up ridiculously well, and uh, really, he's one of the best Pokemon in the game. He really is. And it's nearly impossible to go on OU and not see a team with a Fairhorn in it. So let's go ahead and uh, take a gander. Ridiculous base, 74. 131, 116 defenses, only two weaknesses. Iron Barbs help to rack up damage. One of the few Pokemon with defensive stats above 100 with a decent base HP. Able to switch into attacks with ease and four times weak to fire. That's the negative. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, but hip a dippin'. Come on, man. Freaking Mega Venusaur had better defenses than this guy. You're right, but this Pokemon is able to switch into things. That's the difference. Uh, Mega Venusaur, you're gonna wanna keep healthy. And while you definitely can switch Mega Venusaur into things, Fairhorn is just so popular and so well used that it's nearly impossible for me not to uh, put him in as, as number one. And um, let me tell you why. He only has two weaknesses, that being fire and fighting. Now, every other type on this, every other Pokemon on this type has a ridiculous amount of weaknesses. But being four times weak to fire, a type that isn't too, too common right now in OU is uh, very cool and fighting even. You're, you're gonna need a serious, serious fighting type Pokemon to even two hit KO this thing, and uh, especially after leftovers. So go ahead and uh, take that into consideration. But let's go ahead and take a gander at its stats. 252 in HP, 252 plus in defense, 4 in special defense, minus in attack, Iron Barbs, Leftovers, Rocky Helmet, Leech Seed, Stealth Rock, Gyro Ball, and Protect. Now, you might be uh, thinking this is pretty standard, and it is, but I'll tell you why, because it's so, it, it, it's, it's very usable. I mean, you're not going to be running into anything that's going to be able to one-hit KO this thing, uh, based on its defenses, you're really not. And especially with the 252 plus in defense, nothing's gonna be taking you out, immediately that is. And uh, the combination of leftovers and leech seed are gonna keep you healthy throughout the match. So you're gonna wanna keep that into consideration. Now, what you could do is go into speed. Actually, you know what? Put that minus in speed. I'm sorry about that, I made a mistake. Put the minus in speed and make the speed IVs zero and uh, that'll allow your Gyro Ball to do maximum damage. And since it's only base 20 speed, you're gonna be hitting Pokemon very hard with Gyro Ball. And uh, really, this thing also stops fairies. <clears throat> it stops a lot of Pokemon, to be honest, because not many Pokemon can do too much. Think of Azumarill. 
Azumarill is shut down by Ferrothorn, that's the thing, so if you wanted a uh, good Azumarill counter, which I was when I was uh, new to OU, I, I uh, suck out uh, Theraform. You know what? So, if you go, if you're gonna want a, a good pivot Pokemon, Ferrothorn is your guy. So, that's my uh, top 10 Grass type Pokemon, uh, competitively. That is personally, I am not that big of a fan of Ferrothorn. I mean, let's go ahead and take a gander at its freaking design. What is that, man? I don't know. But the thing is, this isn't based on aesthetics or in-game use. This is purely based on competitive use. So, if you're looking for a... Uh, sorry guys, my recorder stopped, but I feel like I was going off on a tangent anyway. So, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you want this series to continue, please let me know in the comments section. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know on things I could improve upon, if you uh, felt that way. And uh, please leave a like, a rating, or a comment. Any sort of support you want to give to the channel really helps me out, and uh, I do appreciate it very much. And uh, being a small channel as I am with only 36 subscribers, of which I'm only getting about 4 views per video, uh, I, I do feel very um, humbled when looking at other channels and getting any sort of support for mine really means a lot to me. And um, I do want to thank you guys for watching such a long video today. If you've made it this far, congratulations. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll hope to see you guys in the next video very soon. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.